Hello, it's Phil here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. It's great to be here and it's great to be here for Tuesday Tips Live once again. So what did we open with? What were we looking at there on that screen at the beginning? We were looking at what ostensibly looked like someone wearing not very much DJing, right? And a lot of you were going, here we go, who's this superstar who's only a superstar because of what they're wearing and all that sexy stuff that comes up in DJing. But there's a twist to that one because what we watched there at the beginning was a hologram. It wasn't a real DJ. That was a service that you can now buy and plug into your venue and play music from. Pick your character. If you want a girl wearing next to nothing, big size all around, do it. If you want a fella who looks like he's been involved in hip hop since he was brought up in the Bronx, pick one. If you want someone wearing a silly hat, hey, they've got loads of them. You can pick whoever you want to DJ in your venue and select them on a phone app and they pop up and appear just like that video we were watching. That is craziness, right? And that is partly what we're talking about today. Is technology killing DJing? When things like what we just saw are available, are the numbers up for DJing? Is it like DJing come in, it's all over? Finished. We can use holograms and playlists and artificial intelligence and big data and all these things to replace the guy or the girl stood there with a lifetime of love for music playing the records that are right for the people in front of him or her right now. Is technology killing DJ? That's what we're talking about today. Welcome everyone. Uh, it's good to have you here. It's me Phil in the Digital DJ Tips studio uh, and it's going to be a good one today. I think lots and lots of comments already. I'm just going to check her. We're all live. Yes, lots of you are there already chatting away. I'll, I'll get to your comments in a minute but I always like to just check the microphones are working and you can see me and stuff. So welcome. This is Tuesday Tips Live. We are Digital DJ Tips if you're new. We are the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the number one selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. We also run the Digital DJ Tips DJ School, the biggest DJ school in the world but we go live once a week here for free on Global DJ Network on Facebook and on YouTube bringing you a big free talking point, a tip, a lesson, something to get you thinking and to kickstart your week uh, because we all know the week doesn't really start on a Monday, right? That's recovery from the weekend day uh, to kickstart your week and get you thinking about your DJing all over again before next weekend. So that's what we're here for. If you are new to the channel and you've just stumbled over this, maybe you've stumbled over the recording, hit the notify, hit the subscribe, hit the show post first if you're on Facebook, do all that stuff and what that means is when we go live you'll be live with us. If you are watching the recording of this on Facebook this is a recording of a show, it goes on for a while. Don't comment underneath saying get to it, that's not what this is, it's a show. We've got hundreds of people watching and commenting and I will be talking to them and we will be interacting, it's just for people who missed the show. So if you did miss the show you know what to do, subscribe. Right okay, is technology killing DJing? That's what we're talking about today. We started off with a little uh, a little clip of a hologram, I'll give you a few more seconds of that now uh, of a hologram DJ. Now you know what it is. Have another look at this. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. But not only a hologram DJing, we're talking about Spotify having something called Spotify for Business. And Spotify for Business is a system this is the web page for it and it's, it's, I think it actually is called Soundtrack now, it used to be called Spotify for Business. It's a system where any business, so a bar, a lounge, a club, a restaurant, whatever, can program Spotify to play the music for them and that means that you have schedules and there's playlisters at Spotify making sure the music doesn't repeat, that you're not playing the same old thing over and over again and you can have, okay it's filling up now, you can press make it more party uh, or if it's early on you can press just keep it chilled. At the moment those systems don't mix the music but Spotify already has algorithms that do mix music so we're not only talking about holograms, we're talking about Spotify, so it's $16.99 a month. That's not very much to get legal entertainment 24-7 in your venue, right? When you don't know anything about music, you just get to choose. You choose from all those categories there. I mean, there's three of them. They're called Streaming in the Sun, Pop FM, uh, and Amped Up EDM, right? And there's hundreds of those playlists that you can pick from. Never the same song twice. You know, it's, it's programmed for you, so you don't have to hire a DJ. And they will be mixed soon enough, you mark my words. But also, artificial intelligence. 
You might not know it, but that phone in your pocket tells any decent algorithm a lot about you. It tells people where you are. And of course, once, once it could identify you're there, they could link into your Spotify and say, okay, Phil's there and Phil's really into this kind of music. And then they could do the same for everyone on the dance floor. And then this program that's playing the music can say, well, I know who's in and I know what they like, so I know what to play. That stuff is here, guys and girls. It's not coming, it's here. And it's already built into music apps. So with all this stuff coming, holograms, auto playlists, recommendation engines and auto mixing in software and artificial intelligence, knowing who is in a building and therefore knowing what music they like. Is all this going to kill DJing? Well, that's what we're talking about today. And I've got three areas I want to talk to you about. Three areas where only DJs can do stuff, where it's only DJs that can do it to give you some hope uh, and also to give you some pointers for the years uh, to come where this stuff is going to become very commonplace. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we do though, I want to get your early comments over on the comment cam. Uh, so we'll head over there now and then we'll get started on our three ways of staying relevant in all of this. Okay, so early comment on is artificial DJ, uh, artificial intelligence, technology, holograms, playlist recommended, auto mixes, is it going to kill DJing? Uh, so, um, um, lots and lots of you saying hello, by the way. It's awesome. Uh, hi to uh, Darwin and Matty and uh, Zong and Nikki and David and Anthony and Chris saying my first time watching live from Chris uh, to Nikki, uh, uh, to Alex and to Andy. Uh, Nikki says more hair than Phil. Yeah, especially I've just had mine cut. Um, all right then. Um, so, um, so yeah, let's get your comments in. Right, okay, so the first comment comes in from Max, who says, in the 90s, we used Technics 1210s for 15 years. Now it seems every week something new is coming out and no products last. So this is about longevity, right? A lot of stuff comes and goes, but longevity, two Technics and a turntable hasn't gone away. It's a good point. Uh, so um, Ron says, Phil, what's your thoughts about the rumored upcoming XDJ XZ XZ, which is a, a rumored new controller from Pioneer? We'll tell you about that when we get the official word on that, Ron. Um, all right then, uh, Chris says, tech is killing the punters. They are physically there, but they're virtually somewhere else. Now, this is a very good point, is it? isn't it? People with phones on the dance floor. There are clubs now that say, leave your phones at the door. Um, but I totally agree, Chris. Club, club land dance floors have changed a lot because people are physically there, but they're virtually somewhere else. But isn't that the same throughout our lives nowadays? You know, how many times have you sat with your partner or your friends and instead of being in the room, they're just doing this and you think, am I worth so little that, you know, the people I'm with are just flicking? Mind you... I remember going out with my best friend when I was like 17 and he would just pull a load of money out of his pocket and go to the uh, fruit machine. Maybe it's me. <laughs> no, but go to the fruit machine and I'd be like, oh, come on, be in the room with me. I guess there, there always have been distractions, right? But yeah, I, hear, I see what you're saying there, Chris. Technology is, is potentially killing the punters. It's certainly changing the atmosphere on the dance floor. I think we could probably all agree with that. Um, is that for real, says Eric? Is it a hologram? It is a hologram. So I'm gonna show you the equipment that they use in a bit to do that hologram. Uh, it's a recording of a DJ. It's not like a, a computer generated DJ, it's a recording. Um, and um, then once they've got the recording of the DJ set, they can just shove it up there uh, and you can play it in your venue without the DJ being there. Kevin says, what does the DJ do or rather the hologram, if no one is dancing, that's a very good idea. Well, what does any DJ do, do if they just carry on playing? But the point here I think you're making, Kevin, is a DJ can react to the crowd and can get stuff working when it maybe it wasn't working. Of course, the artificial intelligence we were just talking about can also do that, can't it? Because if it knows who's there, it knows what you like. Um, all right then, uh, just a big hello to Neil and Shady, Shady 2 k TV, who says long time subscriber. Hi to John in Singapore, always good to have you here, John. Uh, hi to Jeremy and Michael, uh, hi to Soul Grooves. Uh, Anthony says, is Phil real or is Phil an a hologram? I make too many mistakes to be a hologram, right? Um, big shout to Godson in Chile. Um, DJ Dash says, Phil, please, 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 what is the name of the tabletop lap stand? It looks awesome. My lap stand here. My team will tell you in the comments underneath DJ Dash TV. Uh, they've got a link for it. I haven't. Uh, Manolo says, uh, yes, technology is killing DJ. It's like karaoke. You don't see house party DJ. So the edges of DJing, where there would be a house party DJ, there's now karaoke. Where there would be a... Um, uh, you know, a DJ on a little, a little bit of money in a small bar, there might now be a Spotify playlist. At the edges of DJing, I think we can agree it probably is encroaching 
on the jobs available to DJs. Uh, so thank you for that, Manolo. Uh, hi to Noah in Edmonton, Canada. Always good to have you here, Noah. And DJ Dennis, the Swedish menace in the French Alps. Give you a shout out there, Dennis, because you've got such an awesome name. <laughs> All right then. Um, Chris says, that is creepy. I agree with you, it is a bit creepy. Uh, and Avinal says, very soon robots will be, will be replacing DJs. Uh, all right then, so Sean says, it's not so much the technology, technology is good, it's how DJs use the technology that puts the art in jeopardy. So that's an interesting viewpoint there for Sean. Matt says, it's been dead for 10 years now, I totally disagree with you there, Matt, I think there's some awesome stuff going on in DJing, but thank you very much for sharing that. Hi to Charles in Manchester. Uh, Anthony says, can I get a hologram to go to work for me so I can go and be a DJ? I love it. Yes, get a hologram, hologram, hologram to go to your day job so you can go and do the fun stuff. I mean, you know, you joke, but that is what is happening, isn't it? Technology is replacing the jobs that don't need something extra, something creative, something relationship-based, something that a computer cannot yet provide. I mean, that is what's happening. You're joking, Anthony, but it is. Um, Eddie says that looks generic. I don't like it. This is the girl DJing we just showed, the hologram. Jack says technology... Uh, it's changing DJing, but I don't think it will completely eliminate the human being uh, behind the live programming at venue. I mean, that's very true. The hologram we just showed you has got a team behind it. There's a team selecting the music, getting DJs in, getting DJs, recording that DJ playing the set, and then uploading it to the system. So there are people behind it, but of course what happens is you can get people, 20 DJs playing 10 sets each. Now you've got 200 DJ sets, and you can do that once a week or something, and you've got a team there recording them and uploading them, and then all over, tens of thousands of venues could be playing the same hologram DJ sets. So the number of people needed to do it is, is significantly less, right? Um, all right then, it is what it is, but I'll always enjoy uh, more a real DJ playing, says Claudio. I think this is where the, the hope lies for all this stuff, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. Uh, radio, radio stations have been doing it for years. It was only a matter of time. Yeah, have you ever listened to a radio station and suspected that it's not really a real DJ? Uh, I hate to break, break it to you people, but it isn't. It's all automated a lot of the time, and the DJs literally go in and record 10 minutes of... Uh, of bits to go between the tracks and then it just all gets uploaded to a computer and it all kind of happens. Uh, so if you hear that stuff, that's why. Uh, it's ridiculous, says Anthony. Uh, <laughs> this is why people no longer dance, says Trevina. Well, you mean the phones and stuff? Yeah, it could be the truth there. Um, all right then. Uh, and there goes the DJ industry, says Jeremy. Right. Let's reel back from this negativity here then and let's talk about the stuff that only DJs can do. Let's head back to the main cam here. So what can we do to fight back against this? I'm guessing we want to fight back against this, right, people? We don't want uh, to be replaced by holograms and auto playlists and artificial intelligence. So what can we do? Well, I've divided it into three areas. Area number one is be cutting edge. Because the thing about algorithms and AI and all that stuff is it's reductive. It looks at what's happened before, it looks at what people like now or yesterday or last week, and it says, let's do that again. But DJs are the opposite to that, right? We are all about what can we do that hasn't been done before? What can we do that's new? What can we do that's different? What can we do that pushes boundaries? New genres do not come out of artificial intelligence. New genres do not come out of computers inventing new things. They're not very good inventors. They need people to tell them what to do. So herein lies one hope. You can be cutting edge. You can play very cutting edge music, including edits that only you've got and that only you do. You can use cutting edge DJ techniques. You can see James Hype do something on his CDJs and copy it and use it on your music and bang, you're playing a new technique that no algorithm can copy because it's flying around in the DJ world between real people and not computers doing it. Or you can, uh, just stay very, very relevant. There's always stuff going on in the world that is happening here and now. Let's say, you know, uh, a policeman walks into your venue and you've got, you've got uh, it's the sound of the police on your hip hop list and you bang it in immediately. Now, the chance, it, uh, you, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing that. You normally end up getting arrested and dragged off the decks, but you know what I'm saying. You can do that stuff, an algorithm can't. In other words, you can be relevant. You can react to situations quickly behind the decks that an algorithm could never do, right? So one way of beating automation among DJs, and that's what we're talking about, we're talking about automation, right? One way of beating it is to be cutting edge. Play new music, especially stuff that only you've got or that only you've remixed. Use techniques that are hot right now in DJing, or be relevant to what's happening in your town, in your city, in the news, on the dance floor right in front of you. Do stuff that only you can do, that a computer could never copy, right? So that's one place that we could 
be DJs, be humans, be there and, and, and beat the algorithms. Before we move on to the second of our three ways of kind of like staying relevant in this age of automation and, and AI and holograms. By the way, a couple of you are saying, can we look at the hologram machine? That's what it looks like. It's like a barbecue, doesn't it? Uh, it's, a, it's a box and you, you, you fit it behind the decks and it kind of has a projector in it and it, uh, it sends that stuff up onto the screen. Seriously, that's how it all works. Craziness, isn't it? Right, let's go back and get more of your comments and then we'll move on to the second of our three areas, three ways to stay relevant and to stop technology killing DJing. Uh, all right then, your comments flying in here. Um, Ash1 is pointing out quite, quite um, correctly that Rekordbox has an auto mix function. A lot of DJ gear indeed does have auto mix functions. Um, it's like Asda uh, and other supermarkets, Asda's a supermarket in the UK, a bit like Walmart people, uh, with their self-checkouts putting people out of work, indeed. Um, DJ Son of Abitha says, I'm going to sell myself as a hologram. Look, there's one thing I always like to say, is, which is take a coin, right? If something's happening, if something's happening, flip the coin, get to the other side, right? So. Holograms are taken over DJ. Flip the coin and become the hologram, right? Because you're doing what you're becoming what it is that's killing it, right? So yes, why not? Why not approach companies if this starts to get big and say, look, let me be your playlist and let me make sure the music you're putting out is good for the venues and you can record me DJing it. You know, it's not going to be for everyone. Uh, certainly, some people are going to really have a dislike to this whole idea. But if you think it's a cool idea. Be the hologram. I think you could have you could have something there uh, for sure, DJ Son of Abitha. Um, Keith, this is a lot of you are like this, you know that. Oh God, and I totally understand it. Keith says I might as well sell my equipment. Uh, but anyway, uh, in my opinion, says Bolton Turnips, great name by the way, Bolton. In my opinion, AIs will help DJs to be more creative, and I think this is the right way to look at this stuff. Um, so Pete says Project Fear. Uh, well, yeah, I guess you know. It could be. Generally, when people ask a question, here's a little journalistic tip for you. I mean, I, I ask questions, you know, this was called, is technology killing DJ? Generally, when people ask questions in headlines, the answer is no. Uh, you know, and we know that when we write, when we write those headlines. Um, it will kill no skills, DJ, says DJ Dash TV. No machine can replicate your MC skills, your personality, be an entertainer, or not just be a guy pressing play. You know that track that's at number one all over the world at the moment, and I can't remember the, the girl's name, but by the busker from uh, the busker from Australia. Um, it's called Dance Monkey. I can't remember her name. Um, oh, it's, she's called Tones and I. Uh, you know, she, I don't know if you've seen that track or heard it. I'm sure you probably have. But um, she sings over a very, very simple beat. She just lays down a few beats and a very simple chord pr pr progression. When she opens her mouth, it sounds like nothing but her. And that's what I mean by doing the stuff AI can't do. AI can't replace great MCing and vocals, which is why I, I come to it, because that's what DJ Dash just said. You know, so working with vocalists and stuff might keep your DJing relevant, just saying. Um, so, um, hello to uh, Jean or Jean and Ash One Mill. Hi to Michael, always good to have you here, Michael. Hi to Danny Taylor, it's always good to have you here, Danny. I'll give you a special shout out there. Um, David says, how about a virtual festival? Uh, where the DJ's holograms uh, are like this and all the punters are at home. It would save all that camping crap. Yeah, you could be holograms as well, couldn't we? I mean, you can DJ in Second Life, can't you? There are DJ gigs that go there. By the way, this isn't new. Uh, the Millennium, the 1999 New Year's Eve, Judge Jules, who's a friend of Digital DJ Tips, was one of the DJs playing at Ministry of Sound in London. And they used an ISDN line, because they didn't have ADSL then, an ISDN line to get video of him DJing up into a venue in Manchester. And he de DJed there as well. So this virtual DJ idea is not actually new. It was happening 20 years ago. Um, uh, all right then, hi to Steve in Canada, hi to Two Fine Productions, hi to uh, Anthony, uh, who says, have you seen the Oculus DJ software? Yeah, Pioneer have got behind this system called Tribe VR. Uh, and you can DJ, you can test out using like a Nexus system in, in virtual reality. It's pretty cool actually. Um, we were gonna do some work with them, but we decided not to uh, uh, at the last minute. But yeah, it's pretty cool, virtual reality DJ. I'm not sure what question it's answering, but it is pretty cool. Um, all right then, um, great topic. I hope AI won't become the producer. What do you think? Our AI is already writing songs. Uh, so again, how do we use AI written songs and add something of our own. Maybe AI can do the boring parts of the songs and we can add our magic on top, but that is coming. Um, uh, hi to Reggie. Daniel says, software is not creative and cannot react to the crowd. Well, 
AI software might be able to, but I hear what you're saying, Daniel, it certainly can't at the moment. The only thing that will kill DJing, says Skooks, is that clubbing is going out of fashion. Kind of like the circus, which is more popular in olden times. A good viewpoint there. Although people assembling in a room to, to alter their states and jump around to music, reckon people might always want to do that. Uh, tech is always a great topic and how it interacts with the DJ and the dance floor, says Bill. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Bill. Um, all right then, uh, so the last DJ just pressed play and stood there with no, interac in, no interaction. Uh, so there we go. Um, at least the hologram does not need to rush to the gents between tracks, especially not if it's a girl hologram, Tony. Uh, no, technology is not killing DJing, says Kyle. Uh, technology cannot feel out crowds. DJs must adapt to technology uh, and use it to their advantage. This is an awesome topic and you're giving us a great amount of feedback here, so thank you people. But we've got three things to talk about. So I wanna go and talk about the second area uh, as to why uh, it might not all be doom and gloom. So the second area then, uh, here, we've already talked about staying cutting edge yourself, music, techniques, relevancy. The second area is real time, two way interaction with the crowd. So this is, you know, the obvious one is requests, right? Taking requests off people and playing them, well a computer could probably do that, but deciding which ones are right and which ones aren't, and then programming them so that the dance floor stays happy and full, that's harder, and that is a real skill. So being able to take requests and program them sympathetically and know when to say, nah, we're not playing that tonight. I believe that's still a big DJ skill which ain't going anywhere in a hurry. So interacting, real-time stuff, request is an obvious one. Just chatting to people in the venue. You know, when I was DJing, I spent an awful lot of time, my DJ booth used to have in the club I played in for 15 years, you saw the DJ booth here, uh, the decks here, very close to the dance floor, and then here there was a little window and I could talk to punters. And I used to speak a lot. I'd, I'd show people record sleeves and I'd, uh, you know, just shake their hand and say hello to them when they arrived in the venue, say goodbye when they left. And the same with the front row dancing here. You could lean over and, and chat to them and shout to them and stuff. You know, a computer can't do that, but that stuff is so, so important if you want to get the energy right in a room. And a DJ can do that, uh, you know, a hologram clearly can't, right? So just, just interacting with the punters, and it can be as much as just eye contact and a thumbs up, but that stuff can't be done by computers. Um, and also, you know, just stopping the audio to, to jump on the mic. It might sound silly, but these things really matter. These things can really help lift a venue. I guess we kind of touched on it when we were talking about MCs and stuff. Uh, but you know, again, these are things that these are real time, two way things, because one of the best descriptions I've ever heard of, of DJing is uh, that DJing is about the, the transfer of energy from the DJ to the dance floor, right? The transfer of energy from the DJ to the dance floor. You can't transfer energy from DJ to dance floor if the DJ doesn't exist, right? And it's a big organic part of DJing. So I think as well as staying cutting edge, so what you're doing can't actually be done by hologram, keeping the human stuff there, the relationship stuff, the two-way stuff, the transfer of, of, of energy, of vibe, of spirit, of soul, of duende, as they call it in Spain, you know, that's really important and computers can't replace that. So there's hope there as well for us. You know, if you don't do that stuff, if you DJ with your head down and you won't talk to anyone uh, and you never use a microphone, even when, you know, a little voice is saying, I could really get everyone going now if I use the mic, start thinking about doing this stuff. It's what differentiates you from the playlist and indeed from the lesser DJ. All right then, so we've covered being cutting edge and we've covered networking, uh, sorry, we've covered interacting in real time and two way stuff. A few more of your comments and then we'll cover the third area. By the way, at the end today, I've got something special to announce. We've got some free training, which will help you to stay relevant, especially if you're a mobile DJ, right? So hang around for that. I'll, I'll tell you about that at the end. More comments and then we'll get to the third of our big areas. Okay, so uh, Simon says, I don't think technology is killing DJing, but it certainly is driving prices down. It's much easier now to become a DJ and go out cheaper. And the answer is exactly the same thing, Simon. Uh, you know, do more, do stuff other DJs can't do. In, in the same way you're doing stuff AI can't do, holograms can't do, playlists can't do, do stuff lesser DJs can't do as well. Um, so, um, so Andrew's kind of reinforcing what I was saying, a hologram, hologram can't use a mic. Uh, it takes skill from a DJ to be able to read a crowd and get them dancing. DJs have got to become more creative than what a computer can do, says John. It's definitely what we're saying here as well, John. Um, David says, still can't beat a live mix, though uh, sounds like it's produced the mistake in the mix. Yeah, the, well, yeah, you're basically saying mistakes in mixes make it sound real. It's what Layback Loop believes, of course. Um, a, holiday that a hologram that looks like Phil, so he can take a break. Shh, 
I actually haven't been here for about four weeks. It's been a hologram the last four weeks. No, not really. Um, Michael says, it's the same with everything. Not only DJing, all the self-checkouts at music stores, more and more employees are losing cashier jobs. Yeah, we've covered that one already, haven't we? But it's true. Um, so I'm new to the DJing world, says Manish, and this doesn't look good. Nah, nah, Manish, there's always going to be room for DJs. That's what we're covering. We're covering the positive side of it here. Uh, but it's definitely going to nip away at the edges, right? Uh, the IA or AI and algorithms don't replace creativity. We can use the technology to support our job, but the creativity uh, is, uh, to read the audience is our talent, and that takes years of experience. Agreed, Ruben. And also to pull out that track from 30 years ago that you just know is going to work right now. I never see an AI um, uh, algorithm that can do that. I honestly don't think that that is ever going to happen. Two fine productions underlines what, what, uh, what someone was saying just then. Humans make mistakes, and the it's the recovery that makes the art great. Technology cannot do that. Indeed, uh, that's very, very true. It doesn't kill us. It helps enhance our performances, says Coolen. Um, and holog holograms are great if uh, you were going to a concert with Prince or Elvis on the stage, says Anthony. Indeed, uh, they're good for people who are no longer with us. That's true. Um, I'm just restarting back on my techniques, or techniques for you people in the States. Uh, after years away from DJing, I've also got myself a Reloop Beatpad 2, my first adventure, adventure into digital DJing. I want to get the mix of both right, mixing analog and um, and um, digital. So I like that idea, Dub J. There's another way of staying relevant. Um, so, all right then, we're going to move on to our third thing because I want to try and keep to reasonably close to half an hour and we've got a third point of staying relevant I want to cover. And then I want to tell you about the special news at the end of a special free training workshop for mobile DJs about you staying relevant in the changing world as well. So let's get back here to the, uh, the main section. I want to get rid of that comment actually. That comment's going to really annoy me on the screen. I don't get rid of it. Uh, all right then. So the third area, the third area in which you can shine against AI, you can shine against playlists and you can shine against algorithms and holograms indeed. By the way, if you've just joined us, let me just show you that hologram one more time. This is a little, uh, this is a little um, clip of something which, uh, which has got us all talking today. It's a hologram DJ. Okay, so there you go. Holograms DJing. It's a film. They recorded the DJ. They recorded the, the music. They recorded the whole thing. And then they, uh, they've got lots of them, all different kinds of DJs. And they're on an app. And the app works with the piece of equipment that I showed you, which was this. It looks like a barbecue. It's actually a projector. And it can project the hologram and play the music at the same time in any venue without the DJ being there. So that's what we're talking about. All right, and that got us talking about Spotify playlist, AI, and is technology killing DJing? We've already covered being cutting edge. We've already covered interacting real time, two way with the crowd. So the third area I've identified in which DJing can stay relevant is networking and contributing to the bigger scene. So what do I mean by this? Well, DJs are always asked to, and I believe they should, help with the promoting and PR in their venues. You know, in a small venue where you're a DJ and the place has got to break even week in, week out, there's no such thing as, you know, everyone having one job and one job only, right? Everyone involved in that venue, the door staff, the, uh, the people behind the bar, the manager, the DJs, the promoters, everyone's doing a bit of everything, right? To make the whole thing work, like any small business. So if you're doing that, if you're helping with promotion, you're helping with PR, maybe writing the press release for them, maybe talking to the person you know at the local magazine, maybe talking to the photographer you know who can come and do pictures, all the stuff that we get involved in when we love a venue and when we believe in what we're doing, that can't be replaced by AI. So if you want to stay relevant, do more away from the decks as well as behind them. Another thing is, you know, you can help with uh, intelligence about the scene that you're in. You can help with booking other DJs. You can help with networking with people who've got similar nights in other cities and start to build up an organic human scene based around the music you're playing and based around what, you, what you're uh, trying to do. Again, computers can't do that. Computers are reductive. They look at what's going on and give a slightly watered down version of it. You're pushing forward. You're moving away from what's happened before. You're starting with a blank canvas and turning it into something new by involving other people who feel feel like you do. Computers don't feel, right? So networking and contributing is not just about promotion and PR, but, but meeting other people who've got share similar views, swapping resident DJs between venues that play the same kind of music, all the kind of stuff that can build up a network, right? Uh, and of course, you know, this 
goes down to social networks as well. It doesn't have to be done in the club. It can be what happens when you, the clubs close. It can be bigging up the, the, the venue on the social networks where the people who go to the club hang out and all that stuff. So computers can't do that. And finally here, of course, and I've left a kind of, uh, a, kind of a bit of a hippie one to the end, but people want to know why. Why are you doing this? Why are you DJing? Why do you love it so much? Where does your enthusiasm come from? What fires you up? What makes you turn up every week and play to a half empty venue, hoping that one week in four it'll fill up and it'll really take off? What's your why? If people can pick up on your enthusiasm, on your reason to do stuff, like our why at Digital DJ Tips, the book gives it away, our free lessons like this one give it away, and of course the fact that we sell DJ courses gives it away as well. We want you to be better DJs. We want you to be better DJ producers. Our whole reason for getting out of bed in the morning, all of us, all 10 of us, is to make you enjoy this hobby, this career, more than you're enjoying it now. To make you get more out of it, to show you stuff that you didn't know before and that leaves you more enthusiastic about trying harder. That's what we're here for, that's our why. If we didn't have, have that, the whole pack of cards would fall down, right? So. DJs hopefully have a why. You've got a passion, you've got a reason you got into this. And if you can convey that in everything you do, you've got something special, you've got heart and soul there, which is not something any AI can ever have. So that was, a, I wanted to end on that one because I think there's a lot of truth in that. So, you know, um, we've covered being cutting edge, we've covered um, interacting in real time, two-way stuff, but we've also covered networking and contributing, giving, why? Why are you doing this? Who, who can you bring in? How can you build something bigger than just you and bigger than just what you're doing? How can you create something where there wasn't something before? So that is my response to his technology killing DJing. It's not, it's gonna nibble away at the edges where the very low value DJs are working anyway who are not really doing any of that stuff. And the way you fortify yourself against that stuff is to do the things I was just talking about. The way you fortify yourself against AI and holograms and Spotify playlists and all that is to do those extra things. Now I want to get a few more comments just for a couple more minutes because then I want to tell you about this very special uh, new training course that we have for you. In fact, a couple of you saying I've got to get away. So I'll do the training course thing now and then we'll go and have the rest of your comments, okay? So um, this is what I've got to tell you about. Some of you who've been watching carefully will have heard a little bit about this now, but we're actually now ready to go. Uh, it is a wedding DJ business course. If you are a mobile DJ and you're realizing that in wedding DJing, it is no longer possible to make decent money. You're making four, five, six hundred dollars for a six hour wedding and all the preparation is concerned and you're scared as to, you know, even the future of this, of this thing you do, then this is going to be for you. This is a business course for people who are in the mobile DJ game. And it is about staying relevant with today's couples in today's environment where people have grown up with social media and Instagram and clubbing and superstar DJs. How can the wedding DJ stay relevant in that world? How can you add so much value in these areas we're talking about and all the other areas so that people not only want to book you, but there's a queue of people who want to pay you 10 times that four or $500 mark. We've teamed up with Jason Janai, one of the most successful wedding DJ business owners in the US who charges 10, 15 times what I just mentioned for every wedding and he's, his calendar is full. He's got, also got another 10 DJs working for him. They've got full calendars as well. How does he do it? How do they do it? Well, that's what it's all about. Now, we have a course coming very soon which is gonna teach this in huge detail. However, the really, really exciting thing for everyone watching this now who might be interested in this is for the next week, we're gonna run a completely free workshop and you can get registration there. Now, this workshop is gonna teach you 12 steps. There you go, there's all 12. 12 steps to attracting and getting high paying clients for your wedding gigs. So if you've got not enough gigs or they're not paying you enough money or both, then you need to sign up for this because we will reveal over three lessons on a week long free workshop uh, across 12 steps, exactly how you can fix that. Uh, and it's a standalone course with Jason in there, I'm in there, we're there to help and coach you through it. It's a really intense, fun week and it starts very, very soon, like in the next 24 hours or so. So if you're interested in that, sign up, there is your link. So that was what I wanted to tell you about. Uh, it's very exciting, a special free workshop for everyone who wants to 
get top paying wedding clients uh, and stay relevant. We've been talking about staying relevant, so there's actually a link with what, we, what we've been talking about today. Okay, let's go back now to your comments and we'll end up with just five more minutes taking all your live comments because there are so many there, I can see them all piling in. It's been very busy today. Okay, so uh, Michael says, I've been saying to all my DJ friends, leave the laptop uh, at home and go stand alone. I mean, there is something purist about stand alone, isn't there? Because people can see that you're, you're kind of doing it all. Uh, so um, uh, it's down to the venue. Uh, this is a whole other subject, which is assisting in the downfall of DJing, venues hiring inexperienced, low cost, play pause DJs. The truth is though, Jamie, if the audience don't care, they're gonna hire them. So how do you make the audience care? You do it by doing something that people think this is awesome and I'm coming back next week for it. Um, Phil, you're right, being a technical DJ will always stand you out, e.g. you can't replace DJ EZ, no you can't. By the way, if anyone hasn't seen DJ EZ, go and have a look at him on, uh, on uh, YouTube. He's, he's, a, he's a phenomenon, he certainly is. We've deconstructed some of his mixes in our Digital DJ Lab uh, subscription program, actually. Um, so, all right then. Um, uh, people don't use the technology that's there now, like the new lyrics or lighting programs for record box or the soundstage box to use on lighting equipment. Well, everyone doesn't, Derek, but a lot of them do. Um, but yeah, good point. Just because it's there, it doesn't mean that people are going to use it. Um, all right, then. Uh, so more stuff. Um, uh, Clayton says, can the holograms and AI mixes scratch? Can they do wordplay, mashups, use samples to transition? Uh, no, they can't, of course, or at least they can't yet. So again, this is what I was saying about staying cutting edge, right? Staying cutting edge in order to stay relevant. Uh, so Kenny says, I have a controller, but I want to learn turntables. I think if you have a true passion for DJing, technology can't kill that passion. It can only make it better. You know, the funny thing is that my generation of DJs, we started on turntables. Then CDJs came in and we got into them. Then laptop DJ came in and we got into that. Today's DJs, they're starting with laptops. Then they want to graduate to CDs and not use a laptop. And then they finally want to learn turntables. It's like it's going backwards. But what it shows is a love of the craft. And I do like that. I think that's awesome. So good on you, Kearney. Um, all right then. Uh, Mario says, time to step up on the mic. Hello, Mario. Yeah, indeed. You can't replace the mic quite yet. Honestly, I'd love to see this implemented in a way where we can see holographic live international DJs being broadcasted all over the world. Uh, bedroom DJs being hologrammed onto live events maybe. Yeah, all good ideas and I think we would like to see that. It would be fun. Whether it will replace what's going on uh, in, in real clubs with real DJs is another matter of course. The same thing happened when controllers, CDJs and battle mixes came out. The old heads screamed, no, turntables are nothing says Jamie. Those old heads rapidly died off, whereas those who adapted the Jazzy Jeffs, the A-Tracks, and used the technology to their advantage, their skills went to a whole new level. I mean, imagine a back-to-back -back with a hologram and you. It could happen, couldn't it? That'd be fun. So I, I agree, Jamie, we've got to think outside the box here and how we can use this stuff to our advantage. DJ Mark One, good to have you here, Mark. Technology will not kill DJ, but it will allow a DJ to push the boundaries. Compare the limitations of vinyl mixing to the many techniques now available due to technology, loops, hot cues, and so on. Indeed, I'd hate to go back to vinyl uh, because you can't do any of those things, and I love those things, as a lot of us do, right? So, um, uh, all right then, so uh, I'm going to actually leave that now because we've gone a lot longer than I thought we would. Uh, but thank you very, very much to everyone who commented and everyone I couldn't get to, to Daniel and Ruben and Ryan and Jody and Michael and Trevina again, uh, to Dean. Uh, so uh, everyone who, uh, who's commented, it's been awesome having your comments here. Uh, and we'll be back again next week uh, for another Tuesday Tips Live. Uh, remember that wedding DJ program is at djtips.co slash wedding. I'll give you one more time. Got rid of me then as well. Uh, there it is, djtips.co slash wedding if you want to follow our week-long program to keep relevant and charge great money as a wedding DJ. Meanwhile, let's play out with that hologram one more time because a few of you are asking for it. Till next time then, bye-bye. Uh,